Hey folks, Chad Bratt here with the Real Estate Jedi of Big Block Realty. And as we are approaching election season, I wanted to draw your attention to Proposition 10, a very important proposition for both homeowners, landlords, and tenants. A bill that, if passed, would repeal the bipartisan Costa Hawkins Law of 1995 and would legalize rent control on the state level, a major economic control that severely interferes with healthy economic normal behavior. And before a few geniuses point out that, oh, He's a real estate agent, so of course he doesn't believe in rent control. Well, let me say, wow, what is such a great observation. But on that same shallow observation thinking, that's not going to help you make any more sense out of this stupid proposition that doesn't make sense for the housing market. So let's talk about this. So here's what the people behind this ridiculous proposition will tell you will be the outcome. More affordable housing and revenge against those greedy landlords, right? So here's a dose of straight up reality and common sense for you. Rent control equals even greater shortages of housing. In fact, to think that rent control works in favor of renters is simply preposterous. The problem with the housing market right now is that the shortage of housing in general is leading to the shortage of affordable housing because there is simply more supply, more demand than there is supply. Right? Plain and simple. They teach you this stuff in elementary school. It's a supply and demand curve. And part of the reason for the shortage of housing is due to several things, but one in particular is that builders aren't going to build more housing unless it makes financial sense for them. Why would they put their money at risk without the possibility of a great return? So the, process, the thought process that forcing market-determined rents down artificially will increase the supply of affordable housing is so incredibly and ridiculously flawed thinking. Rent control, in fact, reduces available affordable housing and housing in general. It's been proven in many markets for many decades. Instead of developing apartments and condos now, developers are going to be more incentivized to build auto garages or 7-Elevens, like we need more of those. Look, people, this is really super simple to understand. Since a housing market operates on a supply and demand curve, Interfering with the natural economics of the market by forcing rents below their market value only increases the demand for the housing that is already in such short supply. So now you have more people applying for the same low volume of housing, only now the landlords have lost their incentive to make repairs and take care of you as quickly as they did before. So that flaking, embarrassing paint on the front of your building that all of your friends see whenever they pull up to visit, eh, looks like it's going to be good for another 10 years. All those torn window screens around your windows, they're embarrassingly worn window screens, eh, they look fine to me. Oh, you're gonna move out if the landlord doesn't bend to your demands like he has in the past? <laughs> go ahead and leave and good luck trying to find another affordable unit anytime soon. Just go ahead and get behind that long line of all those other people who just like you are so excited for this incredible government opportunity of affordable housing. Psh, think again, seriously. Imagine the effects this has across the board in neighborhoods that are already predominantly rental neighborhoods. So instead of naively and blindly voting for an intervention in the housing market by the government, who is already largely responsible for this housing shortage with their greed for costly permits and limiting development, think about the actual results of this. Think about how this also opens the door when you think about it like this, for discrimination. Have you ever thought about this? Wow. How much easier now will it be for a landlord to pick and choose and essentially discriminate against who they will or will not rent to when they have so many people to pick from? No, a landlord does not have to tell a tenant why they selected another tenant. They can simply say that the other tenant was more qualified. It's what they were looking for. So if you're not already the number one best tenant there is out there for your landlord, do you really think that this rent control is going to make anything better for you? Ha! Think about how this is also going to impact the elderly or families with children as well. Look, this election day, don't reduce the supply of affordable housing even further. Don't contribute to the creation of slums and increased discrimination in the rental market and protect tenants. Keep the creation of new housing profitable and vote no on this ridiculous Prop 10.